Hello, the denizens of the internet. And so we finally come to the end of this train wreck called The Acolyte. A lot happens in this finale. Actually, finally something happens in this finale. But the show's biggest crime is that we just don't care. The Geneva Convention on Prisoners of War requires me to warn you, there will be spoilers. Many of us have to be treated for PTSD after watching this entire series. There are still aspects I don't understand, like when Mother Anasea turned into charcoal particles and Saul killed her by stabbing the cloud of charcoal particles with his lightsaber. I didn't know you could do that. Uh, what was she actually doing? Someone told me that uh, she was trying to discombobulate uh, May into charcoal dust, who Saul thought was Osha. Why would she kill her kid when the coven was fixated on protecting these twins who were their future? And when her last dying words to Saul were, she had decided to let Osha go with Saul? When Kirill discombobulated into charcoal particles, was she self-immolating or transporting someplace else like Nightcrawler? Ooh, that, that would have been cool. I, I am more confused now than when I saw episode seven. Show eight was built around waiting for Osha to find out Saul offed her mum. This wasn't a mystery. It was a game of keep away. I mean, the entire series was keep away, handled in the dumbest, most ham-fisted way. Just keep interrupting Saul's uh, attempt at confessing with ridiculous distractions till the end where the good and kind sister finally finds out and then force chokes Saul as he's trying to say he loves her, which I didn't find believable. And it was also really creepy. I, I, I don't want to make this a full review because it was way too, it would be way too much work. And, and there will be plenty of others to choose from out there in UU land. And, and I have better things to do with my time, like putting my head into a wood chipper. Let me make some random observations for the sake of closure. Yes, suddenly the force swells within Osha to such a level that she can force choke Saul to death. Yet another female character who can instantly marshal insane levels of badass force powers without much in the way of training. And didn't she say that while she was wearing Keimer's goalie helmet at the start of this episode that she saw where Saul and May were and she had to rush there to save Saul from May? Couldn't the helmet also have told her that Saul killed the cloud of charcoal dust that was her mum? Could discombobulated witch charcoal dust be another gender? Uh, never mind. Oh, how ironic that it was Osha that killed her mentor. Very Greek tragedy, or, or, or could have just been the bad tzatziki I ate. Look, while I expected this episode to be bad, I never wanted them to be bad. After endless filler episodes, certainly things finally happened. And while I can pick apart its idiocy, and I will, it suffers mostly from what came before. If this was the first and only episode of The Acolyte you saw, you might say to yourself, I don't know what's going on, but it was packed with weird looking aliens, lightsaber fighting, some Hong Kong wire work, and a tiny black girl killing a Korean guy. It wasn't worse than an episode of The Six Million Dollar Man. And let me tell you, those of you who have fond memories of the show, there were some really, really bad episodes. As a former network hack, uh, who made some very bad shows himself, what right do I have to criticize the Acolyte? Probably none. But this is my channel. Get your own fucking YouTube channel. I digress. Overall, the biggest problem I have with the show is that the goal of the writers was clearly to make the Jedi the bad guys in Star Wars. And honestly, they failed miserably. Except for the duplicity of Vanestra, the Jedi with the pickle head, the lurkin' gherkin, everyone else was good. And Saul's biggest crime was that he was an emotional, pathetic mess, which I honestly hated. It's not Jedi. While we did get yet another Padawan that turned to the dark side, this has gotten as tiresome as the multiple Death Stars, 
The opening shot of OSHA sporting Keimer's helmet was, <laughs> was funny because of just how big it was uh, in comparison to the rest of her tiny body. She looked like a Sith sickle. Since Keimer's slaughtering of dozens of Jedi, all we have gotten uh, well, until this final episode has been the emo topless Sith bro. The whole scene of them arguing about flying together back to Brendock was ridiculous. All the different factions, Saul and Osha, May and Keimer, and the Jedi gang that couldn't lightsaber straight, all ending up on Brendock, was painfully contrived. Oh, oh, I forgot to mention about May escaping from Saul. Her PIP device extracted her from her one restraint, but why did the left hand restraint stop working? Oh, right, convenience. She manages to escape in a never-before-revealed spaceship. Oh, right, convenience. Saul gives chase, and they zoom about the inside of the rings of Brandock, I, I assumed. Saul looks like he's taking aim to do what exactly? Blaster, tractor, beamer, what? I have no idea. But out of nowhere, Rat Boy sabotages Saul's aimer thingy. Why? I have no fucking clue. Oh, right. Convenience! Later on, Rat Boy turns on the ship's transponder, outing Sol to Venestra. Is Rat Boy a spy? Not everything has to be a mystery, Leslie. Why didn't Sol chew out Rat Boy? Because that's your answer. Leave me alone! Several mysteries are solved or revealed. Remember May fell into the abyss but survived? How did she survive? Well, apparently there was a tunnel embedded in the rocks and it sucked her in. That in of itself was unbelievably lame, but how did May get sucked into the tube of convenience? If there was a fire in the keep, then it would have caused negative air pressure, causing air to be drawn in from the outside. But we know physics is not strong with this creative staff who gave us an open fire in the vacuum of space in episode one. We got to see a reasonably entertaining lightsaber fight between Sol and Keimer, a hilariously bad fight scene between the sisters that looked like a bout of midget wrestling. After Osha deleted Saul, Keimer, Osha, and May skip off into the woods. Osha agrees to train with Keimer. Keimer erases May's memories. We got the Plagueis reveal. He's been in Keimer's cave all this time. Wait till Keimer gets back to Unknown Planet with Osha. Oh, Plagueis, we're home. The Lurkin Gurkin addresses and lies to the Jedi Council that looks more like a Jedi dinner party. And the final reveal is Yoda. We did get to see our favorite soy boy Jedi. This uh, was all very stay tuned to season two-ish. But will we get a season two? The show started with a simple premise. May was killing Jedi Masters. We knew, but the Jedi didn't, and they needed to find out who, what, when, where, why. Uh, May had some kind of mysterious master who told her goofy things, like she had to kill Jedi without using a weapon, and he would, and he threatened to kill her if she stopped doing what he told her to do. She also had a goofy helper who knew a bit too much. May the Bad had a twin sister, Osha the Good, who hung out with Detective Saul. If they could have just kept the show's focus on Saul and his team tracking down the killer and May getting away each time with Osha trying to catch up to her to find out why and, and trying to stop her, this could have been a fun, entertaining show. But it was weighed down by a woke agenda, uh, trying to retcon the Jedi, and turning Star Wars into Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Buffy had more interesting male characters that, that were also straight than the Acolyte. But we know the Force is female and apparently boring. And oh, we did get to see that final beautiful sunset scene with Osha and Keimer holding hands, uh, looking into the distance. What could that be? Anyways, did you... Uh, get inspired that final Hallmark moment? Did you love the show, hate the show? Why don't you tell me in the comments? Till next time, Denizens. 
be seeing you. And I'm, I'm thankful there's not going to be any next time for this show. So, oh yeah, I have to do the hand wave. Bo, bo.